So, and in that case, I mean, there's still a lot of things that Korea can be working with, as well as working with the clean fuels, uh, uh, good emission controls. There's a lot of different strategies. There's a lot of different uh, uh, processes that we've implemented here in California that can be implemented and, and at least um, reduce the local impact on air pollution. All right, so we have a smog chamber here at UCR that is the world's largest indoor reactor to study atmospheric chemistry that leads to fine particle or dust formation. So smog chambers in UC Riverside were established in the uh, late 1970s. Um, and uh, with them, the very first studies of the role of different atmospheric chemicals on ozone formation were really uh, commenced here. So the smog chamber itself is a controlled volume of air. It is uh, surrounded by a Teflon material, which is very clear and non-reactive, that allows us to have captured a specific atmosphere. That atmosphere we will create by adding chemicals of interest. We will then be able to uh, study what goes on outdoors by using simulated light, uh, by adding the appropriate humidity, and basically allowing the chemical reaction to occur over the course of a day. And then what we do is we measure things like ozone or smog formation and uh, particle formation as well. So the scientific purpose of the smog chamber is to be able to identify the chemical reactions that lead to smog formation. So we can provide the key inputs to atmospheric models necessary to predict how changes in emissions will cause changes in atmospheric quality. So here in Southern California, we have a tremendous amount of photochemistry that is leading to this particle formation. So what we can do is we can reduce the precursors, the chemicals that are entering the atmosphere. So from an emissions control side, we uh, can continue to reduce NOx, which is a combustion byproduct. Um, from the VOC side, volatile organic compound side, we can also identify those chemicals that are leading to the greatest formation and ask for them to be reduced. We have many examples of that in uh, California, uh, starting with reformulated gasoline, where we remove the most reactive species, to uh, reformulated paints, to many of the different industries that we're now looking at to try to attain the clean air quality standards that we strive for. I, I would say that uh, we would have to go back to the 1950s here in Southern California to be able to picture our most extreme air quality episodes. At that time, we had a large agriculture out here. Uh, we used what were called smudge pots, which were used to uh, keep the bugs away from the agriculture. And the smudge pots were basically uncontrolled combustion of some really heavy fuel. Um, that coupled with the uh, onset of cars that had no controls on them and a highly reactive fuel led to some very extreme events out here in Riverside. Um, it's been estimated that we had concentrations of ozone in excess of 800 part per billion. Currently, we are striving to get that number under 70, just for perspective. Um, our, these levels here in California have dropped by about sevenfold from those uh, peak times. So early on, we had a combination of our vehicles. We had a lot of industry that wasn't uh, controlled. We had the smudge pots. All of these work together with the sun um, the atmospheric chemistry, the meteorology we have to form these uh, terrific um, ozone and particle events. Over the years that uh, migrated to a combination of sources from vehicles, again from combustion for NOx, mixing with ammonia from our agriculture, forming a tremendous amount of ammonium nitrate. Um, so again, these are things that we are working on controlling um, in our own atmosphere.
Right, so there's, there's been a number of reasons that's led to the improved air quality. Uh, probably the biggest piece was the advent of the uh, catalytic converter, which allowed us to control the emissions from gasoline cars, um, reformulated fuel, which allowed us to reduce the reactivity of the fuel that was released, including uh, vapor recovery during uh, fueling. More recently, the diesel particulate filter have all worked together um, to really improve the air quality tremendously here. Now in Southern California, we still have air quality challenges. We still violate the ozone standard over 100 times per year. So our work isn't uh, complete yet. Um, and that's where our smog chamber comes back into play in identifying what these sources are that we still have to work with to achieve the clean air goals that we have. Right, so we have a strong regulatory community that uh, uh, present in the state of California. That's the, the California Air Resources Board. Uh, more locally, we have an air quality management district called South Coast AQMD. Um, these regulatory agencies are responsible for working with industries, working with other sources to reduce uh, emissions of different pollutants into the atmosphere. These agencies work very closely with our universities to help identify what the most cost-effective methods are, to identify what the driving forces are um, that need the better control, and to also improve their models. And so it becomes a big collaboration between the university researchers, which are pushing forward the science, the regulators that have clean air goals, as well as working with the community. And in that case, I mean, there's still a lot of things that Korea can be working with, as well as working with the clean fuels, uh, uh, good emission controls. There's a lot of different strategies. There's a lot of different uh, uh, processes that we've implemented here in California that can be implemented and, and at least uh, reduce the local impact on air pollution. Here in Riverside, we are east of Los Angeles. Um, and uh, we've had to work very closely with Los Angeles and our upwind sources to uh, ask them to reduce their emissions so that we can have the air quality that we desire. Similarly, um, the same process is going to be necessary to help achieve the clean air goals in Korea, where it's going to be a collaboration between the local um, as well as uh, neighboring countries in controlling and uh, providing the clean air. All right. So air, air pollution itself remains a huge challenge to, to us humans and its impact on our health um, and our well-being. And for us to be able to best improve the air quality, we must continue to do the research and the work to identify what the most largest drivers for this air quality are. Here at UC Riverside, that's where our smog chamber comes into play where we are working through the chemicals of the past, the present, and the future to understand what role they will have in the atmosphere and what role that will ultimately have in the clean air that we uh, breathe.